Hey everyone, welcome to TWTD, a new channel dedicated to things I know how to cook well, at least in my estimation. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe. I suppose you're also free to hate and disavow, uh, but please don't. Honestly, I'm super sensitive. Now that's totally worth the diarrhea. <laughs> so I wanted to do a video on this broth. Uh, I've spent a lot of time pouring through YouTube videos and, and making a lot of batches of this stuff over the, the past few years. And I've really nailed down the flavors I'm looking for and uh, what I want out of, a, out of an Asian soup and what to concern myself with and what to let slide. And I say that because if you've ever delved into Asian soup making in, in any serious way, you'll see that this is a craft that people hold very dear to their heart and it, they all have their own share of rules and superstitions. And So I'll offer the caveat that uh, this is a sort of upcountry degenerate uh, version, as they say, uh, which is at its core really inspired by rural Canadian Chinese restaurant uh, food. Um, and as a French Canadian, I don't really have any cultural uh, skin in this game. Uh, this is just what I've come to enjoy. Uh, so there I've set the bar pretty low. Uh, enough equivocation. For this broth, I use pork. Uh, most often pork hocks or straight up pig's feet if you can find them. Uh, I live in a small town, so I can't always find what I need. Uh, but regardless, you're looking for something with a lot of connective tissue that can render that gluey collagen out into the broth uh, so that when it's cold, it's basically uh, gelatinous. And uh, to me, that's the quality that separates uh, deliciousness from, uh, I don't know, hot ham water. Uh, pork hocks are also a lot of fun if you have squeamish family members uh, because they basically look like somebody's ankles in your refrigerator. Um, they're like the closest thing to a chunk of human flesh you could put on a supermarket shelf and, and sell to someone. Uh, that said, they're usually pretty cheap, and uh, you can salvage enough meat from them after your soup's done to, uh, to make a few pulled pork sandwiches. I actually think this is the ideal way to do pulled pork because I don't really like it enough to uh, make a whole slow cooker full of it that I'm going to end up throwing out eventually. So it's nice to just have uh, enough for one meal and be done with it. Uh, so give these pork hocks a good wash and try to get any of that bony particulate off uh, from the butchering process there. And uh, my first step is to arrange these on a parchment lined sheet with a large onion, a few s stalks of celery, include the celery leaves if possible, uh, a carrot or two and a mushroom. And believe me, don't skip the mushroom, even if you don't like mushrooms. Uh, it really adds a sense of depth and uh, umami flavors that uh, you're going to want in, in the soup. So I've padded these pork hocks, hocks dry with some uh, paper towel. And if you want to, you can rub your ingredients with some uh, sesame oil to help the browning process. I uh, will blast these under my oven's broiler for a few minutes. And what I'm going for here with the vegetables is ideally to get a bit of browning or char on the onions and the celery leaves, which are hugely flavorful. Uh, if you can get a bit of browning on the skin of the pork hocks, all the better, but don't leave it too long, just a couple of minutes. Uh, and that cup, couple of minutes in the oven can draw a bit of blood out of the pork hocks. Uh, which can cloud your soup, so give those ankles another scrub before they go into your pot. And please don't judge me for my dirty oven. So broth makers of a more orthodox bent might insist that you bring these to a boil, drain and then scrub them before starting all over again with fresh water. And to be honest, I haven't found much value in that technique. Um, and I tend to overcompensate by uh, cleaning the pork hocks well after the oven phase. Um, that really is in service of a clear broth, um, and the clarity of my broth has is ne is never been a real concern. I usually let it go far longer than I should, and um, yeah, anyways. Fill your pot with cold water an inch or so above your ingredients and uh, raise the heat really slowly. Uh, I try to keep it as close to boiling but not actually boiling for as long as possible. Uh, but once you put a lid on that sucker, it's, it's going to boil. Uh, and that's okay, I guess. Um, 
so for the first uh, while before you get to that boiling phase, uh, it's important to really diligently scoop uh, the scummy suds and little bits of water-soluble protein that uh, rise to the surface as the meat cooks. Um, I typically keep the broth on low heat for about eight hours uh, and then usually another 10 hours off the heat or just overnight uh, or until uh, I'm reasonably sure that I'll need to wash every item of clothing in my house to get the smell of soup out of it. Uh, if there's one bit of advice that I could offer you in this journey, it would be to resist seasoning your broth until the absolute end and I mean uh, until you're ready to package it uh, for freezing. Uh, a couple reasons for that. Uh, for one, I want to be able to get a proper sense of the depth of flavor before I season. And two, I want the soup to be cooler so that uh, uh, you know high heat isn't affecting my ability to taste and assess its saltiness. When it comes to seasoning your broth, and this might be a controversial take, I start with a dark soya sauce. Don't do this with uh, kikaman, it's not the same stuff. Uh, I do this because uh, when you walk into a store in small town Canada and ask somebody for uh, a bag or a box of MSG, they'll look at you like you just asked them for uh, crack cocaine or powdered rhino horn or, or some other banned substance, uh, despite the fact that delicious MSG is in tons of products because it's, it's awesome. Um, but be careful not to overdo it with the soya sauce or it will uh, take over the flavor. So when you sense that danger uh, beginning to unfold, uh, you can get your soup to the finish line with some uh, regular old salt. Also, if this broth is destined to cook homemade wontons, which I will go into in another, in another video, uh, you might want to season conservatively as your, your wontons can add a lot of flavor and saltiness as they boil in the broth. I like to package these in 16 and 32 ounce containers and uh, store them in the freezer for later use. And here is the eventual end use of my broth 95% uh, of the time. Uh, these are some homemade wontons that I had frozen from an earlier batch. They will take about 10 minutes to cook at a boil and they will change the broth in a variety of ways. Uh, there's a bit of thickening from the corn starch on the wonton wrappers as well as a host of other flavors in the wonton filling itself uh, like uh, garlic, onions and ginger and uh, some more sesame, sesame oil. Uh, but there you have it. Now that's totally worth the diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs>